I've got some printed off copies. So the one that I showed you before, so these ones here, I've just pinched them off a display cake. Um, they were basically just a brown branch with a very simple white blossom with a yellow stain in the center. So this is as kind of simple as five petals, as simple a kind of option as you can get. Um, you can see on the back of this one, I've dusted one of them on the back and not the other. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so the one on the left here has been dusted with a little bit of green, just to kind of blend those branches into the back of the blossoms. And the one here, this one here, the, the brown tape just stops and then the white petal starts. And I really wanted to show you that contrast because if you're in a rush and you're just doing it for fun, it's absolutely fine. You can absolutely leave it like this. If you're um, if the back if you're worried about the backs being on show at all, then you can absolutely pop a little bit of green or brown or even pinky, depending on the colour tones you're going for, onto the backs. And if you're doing it really for realism, then I would pop a little calyx on the back, a little green calyx on the back of each blossom. But for commercial reasons, for profit and things like that, you absolutely don't need to do that. They still do the job and look beautiful as they are. Um, but if you're doing it for competitions and things and wanting them to be botanically correct, then you'd want a calyx on the back of these. So my little disclosure there before anyone calls me out for my lack of calyx. Um, they, this was done for a photo shoot. So. <laughs> so these are the ones that were really kind of similar to this type here. So these were five petals, but we also have some with four here. So some are four, some are five. Some are just white with a little yellow stain in the centre, like these here. And obviously you can add in leaves, you can add in buds as well. But we're just going to talk about making the actual petals today or else we'll be here all day. So again, this is just the five petals with the white, lovely, delicate petals the yellowy stamen and it's just nice and vibrant you can see here actually the calyx on the back of this one and it's just kind of folded back a bit and this one and this one here have calyxes on and you can just kind of add those on if you wanted to but we're not going to worry too much about those today okay um, and then we get some more pinky ones so some of the blossom obviously we're all familiar with blossom trees it they're beautiful and i can't wait for them to come out because they really are cheerful um but this here is starting to get more pinky tinged. So um, again, I've got a couple here that I've made up that are a little bit pinky tinged versus the white ones, which I'll show you here. And then you get like the double headed blossom. So these are double headed. So I've done two layers of petals on these rather than just the four or five petals. And then we get even more pink here. And this is where the branches turn from greeny brown to like a deep red. Um, and the, the leaves here are quite red, like a pinky red. So you can kind of do whatever tones you want. You can kind of go for whatever colorways you want. Um, I'm going to show you this type of style. I'm gonna show you um, the double headed version of the pale pink as well. Now there's two ways of doing these. So one with the single headed, and one with the double headed. The sleeves are getting rolled up, girls. Um, okay, let me just see. I went for this in my food shop, but I'll just have to make it up. <laughs> yes, Karen, you don't blame me. It is really, um, it is really moorish and addictive. Um, lots of blossom here. Oh, you lucky thing, Rachel. I can't wait for it to come out. Um, oh, welcome, there's my badgy quarters. Oh, brilliant, Caroline, I'm so excited. Um, excellent, Madeline, excellent. Okay, so I am using today, let's just run through what we're using. So I'm using the Suzanne Esper flower paste, first time I've used it, so we'll give that a go. I was chatting to Suzanne yesterday, so I'm excited to give this a go. I actually made a couple of blossoms last night and petals, and it's lovely, but I used such a tiny amount, so I've only used it on this flower. Um, if you don't have this one, um, I would, so Squire's Forest Paste is a really popular one. Um, I would suggest that you need a little bit of stretch in this and you want to be able to get it quite thin and fine. So if you are using Squires, I would also mix it 50-50 with some of the um, Simply Heaven Ultra Fine um, flower paste as well. So Because that's really nice and soft, so you end up with a much more pliable um, paste. But um, this one feels nice, so I'm going to go ahead and use this one. 
cutter wise so I am going to be using so I'm going to do two different ways so these ones here are individually all the petals are individually wired okay so we make five four or five individually wired petals um, and then these ones here the pinky ones were made with a um, five petal cutter okay so I'll show you both of those ways um, but in terms of those cutters so this cutter here is, a, is from the Rose set from, what brand is this, FMM. This is a really cheap set. So if you were on my class last year, the wedding cake masterclass that we did last year, um, where we did the trio of cakes, you'll have used this set. It's, it, I think they're less than £10. Um, and I'm using the smallest one from this. Um, I can give you a rough idea of dimensions, but you don't need to be too exact. So this one is 15 mil tall by about 14 mil wide. So 15 by 15, it's quite round, but we're gonna stretch it a bit anyway. Um, and then for the double headed blossoms, we're going to use this. So this is actually from this set here, from Blossom Sugar Art, um, and it's the smallest of the two. Um, so we're not gonna use the veiner, we're just gonna use the smallest five petal cutter. It also, it, it, literally the same size as this one, which is also from F FMM. So again, just a five petal cutter. And these two, so that's the metal one, that's the plastic one. It doesn't matter which you have. Uh, they're 25 mils wide, okay? They're both the same. So whichever one you've got, or just, you know, nearest, have a route through your drawers and like your cupboards, wherever you're, you keep your sugar flowers, cutters, and see what you've got that's, you know, that's similar in size and shape. Um, but as usual, use what you've got if you can, you know, try and, try and already use, you don't need a special cutter for it. Okay, so I'm gonna get some of this paste out and I have a Ziploc bag and we're just gonna condition this paste. Ask me if you have any questions, guys, please do just let me know. Where can you get the flower paste from to the Suzanne one? I think Suzanne's is just from Cake Stuff at the moment. Um, I might be wrong about that, but I know you can definitely get it in Cake Stuff. I think it's out, it might be out of stock at the moment, but um, I know she's trying to get it back in stock as soon as possible. So, um, Otherwise, the Squire's Kitchen one, you can get from Squire's Kitchen online or loads of places, loads of online cake decorating stores um, stock that and as the same with Simply Heaven as well. Are you supposed to do good squares and Simply Heaven, it's fab to go with. Yeah, Amy, that's what I teach with. It's really, it's, it's a really nice softness, but I didn't actually have any of the squires. So, um, and I've had this for a little while and I've been meaning to use it. So I thought, I was ha having a chat with Suzanne yesterday, so I thought, let's give it a go. Okay. So with flower paste, just give it a little condition, so warm it up in your hands. You can pop a little bit of Trex into it if you want. This is actually not too bad, this one. Some of them, like the Squires one, is really stiff when you first start to work with it. So just be mindful of that. Um, and use the Trex, which is basically just vegetable shortening um, or Crisco if you're in the States, um, basically to recondition. So as you work with this, as it's out of the Ziploc bag, it will start to dry and you'll need to just pop a little bit of Trex, just need a little bit of Trex into it to um, make it nice and pliable again. Okay. Any case of case that we don't have any flower cutting yet, but I'm sure it's for buyers is so brilliant. Oh, perfect, Karen. People keep telling me to buy a flower pro. Yeah, you, I mean, there's so much, there is so much out there and I'm not going to show you all the stuff I've got, but bear in mind, I've been doing this 10 years, so I've like added to it over many, many years, but um, yeah, it's, there's a lot of stuff. So, okay, so I have a small rolling pin um, I have a little cornflower pouch um, I have a work board here and a petal pad. So I'm gonna use the pet, the blue petal pad rather than the white one. So you might have, you might see the white ones out there. I'm gonna use the blue one because the paste will show up better on camera for you. Um, okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is be making four of these individually wide petals. 
so that we can form one of this style, okay? So for that, I'm going to use the smallest cutter from the FMM rose cutter set. I don't need a huge amount of this paste. A lot goes, a little goes a long way, it's the same. Um, because we are rolling it out relatively thin. So I'm gonna pop a little bit of corn flour onto my board to stop it sticking. I'm just gonna, and you can roll this through a pasta roller if you want. If you're doing loads, you might want to roll like strips through a pasta roller. So see how that's pulling on the rolling pin there. So what I'm gonna do to stop that falling over is just pop a little bit of corn flour on the top as well. And it will just help it not stick to the rolling pin. Okay. So this is nice and thin. You can kind of see my fingers through it a little bit. We're not wanting to roll it to its final thinness, but we, we are wanting it relatively thin because we want some stretch in it as well. Okay. So I'm going to cut four out of this here. And if you've got the paste, so I would usually just go and roll a big bit of paste and cut a load out at once and then keep them in my Stay Fresh mat. So there's different ones of these. This I just got off Amazon, but um, I think there's a gray one that you can get. I think, I can't remember whose that is now. It's somebody's brand, branded one. Um, usually I would just go cut a load of those petals out and keep them. And then obviously, because I'm working quickly usually, um, I can then work my way through them. But for now, I've just cut my four out. So four or five. Um, I've cut five out there in case one of them ends up dodgy. So always cut yourselves a couple of extra if you've got the space out of the paste. Okay, pop that back in our bag. But if you're starting out, what I would do is just start off with rolling out, cutting out four at a time and working on those four at a time until you get the process and you can start to speed up a bit. Because once they're out, even though we've got them in our Stay Fresh mat, um, they, we've got like a limited amount of time to work with them and different branded paste will give you different amount of time. So Squires sets really quite quickly, for example, um, compared to uh, like the Simply Heaven or perhaps this one from Suzanne Esper. Okay, so the next thing you need to do is shape this um, and vein it and get it onto a wire. So the wires we're gonna be using uh, the white wires and I am using a 28 gauge white wire. So I'm just cutting them into four. Okay, so I've got four there. Pop that to one side. And the thing we're going to do is create um, a twiddle onto the back. I'm addicted to moles. Let me know if you can claim about Karen. I know. Uh, the grey ones in a close wash. That's it, Esme. Thank you very much. I need to rationalise. I still have loads of Karen Davies moles, and to be honest, I just don't use them. Oh, Helen. Yeah, you can't. Do you know when we were moving house last year, I had a good old clear out, and I put loads of stuff on Facebook Marketplace, and a, a load of old books that I had, like cake decorating books and baking books, and I did them as bundles, and loads of people. I, I made loads of money from it. Like, obviously, I didn't make more money than I'd spent on the stuff, but. Um, considering it was just sitting around gathering dust and I was never using it, it's great to be able to then, you know, there's so many sort of people taking it up as a hobby that um, it's great to be able to sort of pass those beginner sort of things on to another person. So we've got our, we've taken one wire and we've cut it into four and we're going to create a twiddle on each of those um, and then use a mould. I'm going to use this veiner here. Um, I think it's from diamond paste mold and it's just I think it's a I think they market it as an orchid veiner but it isn't I've never used it for an orchid veiner but I have used it as a ro rose veiner before but I just use it as a multi-purpose veiner but anything that's just gonna so like an anemone one or something like that's just gonna give you like sort of striations in your petals you don't need to vein them um, but we are going to vein them as part of attaching the twiddle onto the back. So for this method, where we're doing individually wide petals, we do need to sort of get them into a veiner to adhere the petal to 
this, if that makes sense. So I'll show you one. So we're just creating a little twiddle on the end there. And uh, size wise, we've gone, so it needs to be proportionate to the size, so it's only a centimetre deep. So pop that into the mat. So I'll do one at a time on this. Needs to resist doing multiple at a time, which like I would normally do. Okay, then we've got our ball tool, or you can use like the back of a cell pin if you wanted, like the curved end of a cell pin. And we're going to take one of our petals. And again, you might want to just pop a little bit of corn flour onto it. And we'll just pop your forefinger onto the very, to the pointy end, just to keep it in one place. And then we're just going to stretch that out a little bit and we're thinning the edges. So we've made it bigger. So this is the size it was before, to give you some reference. So we've just stretched it. So we don't mind some thickness being at the bottom, but the, the top two thirds and particularly around the edge, we want it thin. I've not ruffled it. We're not creating ruffles because it's going in here anyway. So then we put the twiddle down, we put the petal over it, and then we press down really hard. Now you can use a veining board for this. This is just a quicker method. Some people hate the twiddle method. Some people prefer the veining, the veining board. It's totally up to you. And that's our finished size and vein. And hopefully you can see on there the vein just wait for this to catch up to check that you guys can see that. And that's the back. So the twiddle has completely disappeared into the back of the petal. Does that make sense? Give me some thumbs up guys and let me know. Just gonna, oops, we're all right on the camera there. It's, you're just catching up on my, <laughs> so just checking that I've got it in the right place with the camera. So that's the size difference that we end up with, okay? So at this point, you can then just go over the very edge with your ball tool to create some movement there. So just really gently. I'm not wanting to create lots of ruffles, I just want to create some movement, okay? So then I'm just popping it into one of these. So just leave it there to dry. And I would just leave that overnight. So when you're doing wired petals, you need to leave them to set up overnight. Um, let me just have a catch up on your poppy bend from diamond paste. Yeah, I thought it was Caroline. I've had ages. Um, the twiddle, Heather, I'll do another one now. So um, the twiddle is just to basically attach the, it's like the vein. If you use the vein board, I don't know if you've used the vein board before. Um, it's to attach the petal to the wire, basically. So when you're doing um, Sugar City on Near Me, and I learned this way, excellent Caroline, yeah. Looks so delicate. Oh, brilliant, thanks Dan. Um, okay, so I'll show you another twiddle now. So we've got a quarter of our wires, it's a 28 gauge wire here. And we're just popping a little bit of paste, so I get a, a, a circle like this, just a little ball. Just pop it onto the end and then with my thumb and forefinger, I'm literally just twiddling it. So spinning. I'm holding it loosely in this hand, so this isn't tight, it, the wire can move, okay, you can see that there, it's moving. But I'm just with the pressure, just running that down and then pinching and pulling so that I've just got about a centimetre left because that needs to be proportionate to the size of the petal. So I don't want it to be massive. And I don't want it to be really fat and chunky. Um, we don't want to add loads of bulk to our petal with it. So when that is ready, and this is why like when you're first starting out with any sort of new flower, just do one petal at a time. Okay, my finger's a little bit sticky. So with the twiddle bit, when you've cut out your petals and then you get a little bit of paste out of your bag, to then create the twiddles, you might want to add a little bit of um, treks into it because you do need, if your paste is too dry, um, when you come to do this next bit, they just won't stick together and then you'll leave them overnight and they will come apart. So make sure that you've got um, nicely conditioned paste when you come to do the twiddle bit um, because otherwise they just won't stick together, okay? 
So you would make four of these and that would give you one flower along with the stain and center, which we'll do in a second. So a little ball on the end, twiddle it down. Some people just cannot do this method and I totally get that, but do practice it. I was all fingers and thumbs years ago when I first, first started trying it. Um, and now it's as quick as you like, but you can use the veining mat if you want. Um, if, you're, if you've learned with the veining mat and you're comfortable with that, then, you know, happy to crack on with that way. It's each their own. Okay. So when it comes to buying things, I quite like buying things that I can use for multiple purposes. So this veiner is a good one. Even though it's sold as from Diamond Paste as an orchid veiner, I don't actually use it for my orchids, but I have used it for roses. I've used it for all sorts of different things. You could use it for anemones. I always struggle to say that word. You can use it for anemones, you know, anything that needs like a, just a subtle striated, um, that's, that's a word, um, vein in it, you can use this one. So see how I'm just keeping my little bit of paste there that I'm taking my twiddles from? That's also in the Stay Fresh mat because I don't want it to go too dry. Okay, so pop it on the end. Twiddle it down. So we're not wanting to see the end of that wire popping out. We're wanting the end of the wire to be covered, but we don't want the twiddle going massively beyond the end of the wire. It needs to kind of, that's the end of the wire there where I'm touching, okay? And then pinch off anything beyond how long you want it to be. And make sure that's nicely attached to your wire. So a little bit of ball tool in a stretching. And then obviously by putting it into the veining mat, it is sort of making it slightly bigger again. So any thickness that's there when you pop it into the veining mat will be sort of thinned out again. Portia, I will take a picture of all the bits that I've used at the end. Um, and pop it in. So then we just do a little bit of movement around the top edge and then it goes in the drying mat. So I've got my, I know this is difficult to see because it's such a pale drying mat. I've got a yellow one actually, I should have used that. Um, so pop those, leave them overnight. So I yesterday I made I think five sets of four um, and have let them set overnight. That paste can go back in to, to the bag. Okay, so we're just going to make a centre for those now. I'll just check your comments, see if there's any questions. Mm -mm. Heather, is that, um, is that okay for the twiddle? Is that, does that make sense? Oh, I know you lost connection for a sec. Um, it took me ages to get to grips with the twiddle method. The key for me was I was taking too much pace. Yeah, Caroline. Did you do the um, twiddle method with in the class last year, Caroline, when you were here? Um, I think we did, didn't we? I think we did with leaves, didn't we? Um, yeah, the veiner portion is just the, from Diamond, Diamond Moulds. It's the poppy veiner. But you can use any veiner as long as it, yeah, this is just one of my multi-purpose ones that I use for lots of things. Please don't feel like you need to go start um, buying specific things. Um, have a look at what you've already got and see what you can make use of. Um, so yeah, please don't feel like you need to go buy everything. Since I started the Twiddle Method, I use it for every flower now, it's great. Oh, brilliant, Rosa, that's good to know. Yeah, did you, did you get it straight away, Rosa, or did you have to like practice that a little bit, like Caroline said? Um, no problems, Heather, <laughs> if you miss anything, just shout. I only use twiddle and stick method. I struggle with anything else after all these years. Perfect, Denise. Yeah, you've got to do, oh, brilliant, Caroline. Um, you've got to do what works for you, haven't you? So, I'm just gonna do these on the blue mat so you can see, hopefully, because it's a bit tricky otherwise. So these are stamen. So um, let me know if you've used stamen before. I used to have no idea what they were for, even when I was making flowers. I used to see them on online cake decorating stores and be like, nope, I can't fathom how you possibly make these into anything flower related. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how. So the ones I'm using today are from Culpit. Um, again, you can just get them online. The code for these is 1340W. So these, they don't often, 
Um, some websites don't tell you the code um, and they don't tell you the sizing. So they never tell you the sizing, in fact. So they describe these ones, I think, as micro stamen. So they do them as like small, mini, long, large, big, round-headed, pearl-headed, pearlized, pointed, so many different ones. It can be so confusing, which is why in my tutorials I will always tell you the code because it can be really tricky otherwise. So if you search for this, so culpit stamen 1340W, these are micro stamen and they're really, really small. Um, because these blossoms are small, we don't want big, chunky stamen in the middle. We want them to be as delicate as the petals around them. So I find that the micro or the mini ones are perfect for this. And again, we're going to take a 28 gauge wire and we're going to use half of it per center. Okay, so just cut your wire in half. I'll do two of these so you can see. So I just tend to buy these mostly in white and then color them myself. So they do come in different colors, um, but I've found over the years that the colors are invariably never what I actually want them to be anyway. So now I just tend to buy them in white and color them myself and I'll show you how to do that. Um, so just grab a, a, a bunch of them. <laughs> Don't, you don't need to be so specific. I will count how many I've got here because I know you guys will want to know. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten to twelve will be perfect. And um, then just gently, and it's a bit fiddly this, but make sure that they're all lined up, okay? So that they're not all higgledy piggledy like that, but they're all lined up and even. And then keeping tight hold of them, we're going to put the wire halfway across. And we're using a 28 gauge wire here and we want it to be white because we don't want it to stand out in the center. We want it to all blend in. And we're bending that over like a hook. And then we're gonna fold these stamen up towards each other. Again, making sure that they are at the same height, okay? And then we're gonna keep hold of that really tightly and start to twist this wire around. Is this making sense so far? Please let me know. <laughs> Sometimes you know when you're explaining something and it makes perfect sense in your own head, but everyone else is just looking confused. Well, I can't see your faces, so you must let me know. So I'm just gonna snip off that little end bit so that we can pop it into a polystyrene uh, dummy to, to set up. But I also want to make sure that this bit, can you see this bit here? It's a bit loose, so it's not holding them particularly securely. I don't know if you guys can see that. So I'm just going to twist it a final few times with the pliers keeping this straight. Because if I try and twist just by holding it, it just moves in my hands. I can't grip it tight enough to twist that final bit at the top. Okay, so now it's holding its own. It's not sort of wobbling and flapping around the place, okay? Let me do another one of those. Excellent, Jan. <laughs> That's good to know. Okay, so I'm not counting these out. You can do if you want. Um, you get quite a lot of stamen in a pack, so um, I think there's usually like a hundred and something individual stamen. Um, but obviously, depending upon what you're making, so stamen are brilliant for like open poppy, uh, open peonies and things like that. So peony season is coming up May time, um, and obviously they're much bigger stamen. Um, I haven't got any of those reachable, so I will, I can't show you, but the heads of them are much bigger. Um, but you could use like a whole pack, for example, on one flower for those. Um, they're not the cheapest, but like with these, you can get quite a lot out of one pack. Um, so yeah, whereas like with the poppy, with the poppies, I keep saying poppies because of this veiner. Um, with the peonies, like you could use a whole pack just on one um, peony sometimes. So um, yeah, so we're gonna hook that over, fold these up, making sure that they're similar height, and then start twisting. So you can do this bit ahead of time. If you know you're going to be making a load of blossoms, get your centers made um, in one sitting. You could then make your petals in another sitting. 
uh, leave them to set overnight and then do your dusting and taping in the final setting. So you don't have to sit, um, it's a flower that you can kind of prep for if you like and you don't have to sit and do them all in one batch like you do with some other flowers. So you can have these prepped and just, you know, leave them in, in like a little tub, tray, box, whatever you want to store them in. Um, and then come back to them once, and then make your petals up and, you know, the individual petals again, you can just line a little um, Tupperware with some kitchen towel or bubble wrap and again store those in. Um, and then, you know, you don't have to do it all in one sitting. So that's our two centres made. Um, I'm going to just tie those up and move them out of the way before I knock them over. So just quickly to talk about colouring these. I mentioned before how I um, tend to just buy them in white and then colour them to whatever colour I want. So here's <clears throat> some other ones that I did prepare earlier. <laughs> Bloopy styly. And you can see they're just a nice um, yellowy colour. So I'm just using from Sugar Flare the buttermilk, buttermilk yellow. Um, there's my brush. And I'm just going to mix a tiny amount of this in with some clear alcohol. So I'm using the lemon extract, which is my go-to because it dries really quickly and smells lovely. So I'm putting a tiny bit of lemon extract <clears throat> in with the powder to create an edible paint. So just mix that in, make sure it's all nicely dissolved. Any little um, grains or anything are dissolved. And then we're just going to go on and paint those very ends, the very tips. So you can buy these in like a pale yellow, but they really are quite pale. Um, and it's just, I think the blossom, they're not, even when I bought them in yellow, I've still then done this because they're not quite, um, vibrant enough and the spring blossoms you know they are vibrant they you know they're the first signs of spring and they're lovely and colorful and vibrant and we want to show that so the green tones in there they're more sort of lime zesty greens if you're incorporating any greens onto the backs of your petals they're not sort of dark leafy greens um like a rose leaf or anything they are nice and vibrant so and that will dry within like a minute they'll, they'll be ready so um, you can just pop those to one side okay so my petals are set overnight <laughs> <Ta -da! laughs> and um, so I've got three sets of four here um, and a couple of things that we're going to do um, first of all we're going to add a little bit of color to them uh, and secondly we're going to position them and bend them into the right position so that we can start taping them. Um, so, the dust. so again, like we mentioned before, you can obviously choose whatever colour scheme is right for you and your project that you're working on. Whatever feels nice for you, just, you know, go for that. Um, so, I'm going to use on here a little bit of fractal cream. on the go um, which is essentially I don't know why they call it cream it's lemon yellow <laughs> it's totally lemon yellow um, I also love having a bit of white to hand in case things are a little bit too much because I'm talking about these being vibrant and if you've been around in this group for a little while you'll know that I'm not overly vibrant in my um, color palettes um, and then we're using this kiwi from Edible Art, which is a really zesty green. So just pop some of those into your color palette. And what I'm going to do on the front is slightly different to what I'm doing on the back. So on the front, I'm just wanting some of that cream in with the white because the cream all brands of cream, I've not found one yet that I would actually call a cream, it's yellow. Um, so I always add quite a bit of white to it to get mine to what I would call a subtle cream. 
So like if I'm dusting the center of a white rose, I'll always make it a little bit creamy rather than just leaving it stark white. Um, and if I actually use the one that's called cream, I would just turn it into a yellow rose. So I'm just starting from the very bottom and I'm just adding a tiny bit on that bottom part there. So the bit that's going to be closest to those center stamen. If you see these bits here. So you can add, so these ones are a bit more greeny. If you want to go for a bit more green, then that's up to you. Um, these ones on here, they did have a little bit of cream on them, but they've faded because they've been on a display cake and the light has got to them. So you can leave them all white if you wanted them with just a tiny bit, or you could just leave them white altogether if you wanted. Totally up to you. So we're just doing it on the fronts for now. And just at that bottom part. Okay. And then we're gonna add some color onto the back of them once it's wired and once it's taped together. Okay. So we've got one of our centers here. We've got our four individual petals. And what we're going to do is just take the pliers and just holding the plier right the very the very first part of visible wire coming out of the petal. So not down here, don't leave space, we're wanting it, and don't put your pliers onto the, the flower paste. The very first bit that's visible, we're going to bend it back so it's 45 degrees. Ish. You don't need to be precise. So about 45 degrees. And then we've got some white florist tape. So I like using the half width tape. It means that you're not adding extra bulk, you just unnecessarily. Okay, let me move this out of the way so we can go back on the blue and you can see better. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I don't want to take the petals here because those stamen are far too long. So what I'm gonna do is wrap the, white, the tape up those stamen so that only some of them are exposed. So we're going about two thirds. Oops, got a low battery on something. Doesn't like that. Oh, because I've not plugged it in. <laughs> Shocker. There's always one I forget to plug in. Hang on. There we go. Hopefully that's okay and not too late and we don't get cut off. If we do get cut off, I'll jump straight back on. So come back and join me. So that's how much we've got sticking out. So you can see how we've gone from all that length of stamen to just that length of stamen. And it also means that these are nicely tight together now, okay? So because we've now made the base of our stamen here and not here, this is where we're gonna attach the petals. So if we tried to attach the petals down here, we would have had, it would have looked a bit silly, <laughs> okay? So instead we've created a new base up here where it makes sense. Have I frozen? I think I might have frozen. Let me see. I'm waiting for you to catch up and let me know I'm not frozen. Um, so, let me know that you can see me okay. My screen's froze, so I'm just checking that you guys are okay. Um, I don't always do it dry, Kim. Um, I tend to, but I, I mostly do, it's because usually it takes me such a long while to make all the petals that I'm making, um, that by the time I get to the end of that, it's usually late on in the day and I don't dust unless it's in proper daylight, if that makes sense. Um, back now, oh good, did I, did I freeze or disappear Jan? If I go off, I will come back on, I promise, because um, <laughs> I need to finish this, I'm a complete finisher, excellent. Brilliant, okay, so we're back. So yes, I tend to, just um, from timings, I'll make all the petals, and by the time I finish them, because usually I'm making quite a lot of things for wedding cakes, um, it's too dark for me to be dusting. Um, so yeah, I, I tend not to dust as I go, just because it's quite a messy job as well. Um, okay, so we've got our tape, and we're gonna position our first petal 
and the tape that's going to be wrapped around right up to where to hide all the wire basically so where that point at which where's my dressing tool the point at which the wire becomes the petal the tape is literally here okay and then I'm going to add the second one completely opposite And these will move around a little bit, don't worry. But if your petals, these are still a little bit soft because I only made them last night. Um, so you have to be really careful with them if you're touching them, if they're not fully set, which is why it's great to make them, you know, if you really are, if you can make them in advance, that's brilliant. And then the fourth one goes in. I'm being really delicate with these because I can feel they are a teeny bit soft still. So you can see how they're moving around here. Do not worry. What we're going to do is just get that tape secured and then we can have a bit of a faff about with the positioning. Okay. So I'm just going to clip a couple of these wires off because I don't want this to be broken and it needs to be. And I'm going to take that tape, the spare tape, all the way down to the bottom. Okay, let me get rid of these. And at this point, you can do any repositioning that you need to, and then we can have a look at the back. So if you wanted to pop a little bit on the back, you can do. You might want to do it like a light yellowy green. Still on, I'm paranoid now that I'm going off. I'm conked out for a second. <gasps> Gosh, I need to keep an eye on it. I'm assuming my husband's watching, so I'm he's, well, he's working downstairs, but he's also watching, so I'm assuming he'll let me know if there's a major problem. So on the back, I'm just doing a tiny bit of this green. And again, this is quite vibrant. Like my limit for vibrancy, guys. And what we do when we come to take those onto a stem is that this white won't be white anymore. Okay, have I gone off again? I think I keep going off. I'm paranoid now. Yes, Kim, I did. I'm so sorry, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I'm frozen. Are we back? I don't think we are. Oh no! On and off. Hopefully this is back on again now. I'm going to wait until some of you, I'm just going to keep twiddling this because I can keep an eye on it on the recording and see if it's still moving. It is, so I'm hoping when you guys catch up in a second, you'll all be fine. Rich, if you're watching, please let me know <laughs> if it's okay. It's back. Caroline says it's back. Hopefully we're good. Okay, so that's our blossom. That's one of our blossoms. And you can spread those little stamen out if you wanted. Um, just be really careful with it. But obviously, when it comes to taping them, we tape them with brown tape. And then you can blend the colour in a bit if you wanted. I think he might be Caroline. What's he up to <laughs> on lots of uh, meetings? Okay, now it's okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks for bearing with. I think our audience has um, dropped off a little bit, but hopefully people will come back on. They might just be refreshing. So that's our one of our blossoms, the four petal ones. And like I said, you can add a fifth petal in if you wanted. So these ones are with five. These are with four. These ones you can see because they were with four, I've made them slightly bigger. Um, so, yeah our little four petal ones it's still I'm still off oh no Heather all mine looks okay here so hopefully hopefully Heather it's just you <laughs> oh I hope so no offense <laughs> um let me just quickly tape up another one of those in case any of you missed any of it and then we can do a whole stem and then I'll show you just one or two of the double pink headed ones 
a different method altogether. We won't make a whole branch of those because I don't think we're going to have time, but I'll show you how to make the individual blossoms and then taping them together is just the same as this. Okay. Excellent, Jan. She's back. <coughs> Excellent, Caroline. I'm waiting for Heather to say she's okay. <laughs> okay. So we've got our four petals bent backwards. We've got our stamen and we just need a strip of tape. Do you steam your flowers when you've dusted them? Not often, Helen. Um, so some I do if I'm wanting, so I do with my leaves, if I'm wanting a glazed look and if I put an absolute ton of colour on it, then I will do. Um, but I find that steaming can often change the colour. Um, it can deepen it and you've spent all that time sort of making it lovely and I think these are my new ones that I've just, <laughs> yep, they're still completely soft because I've only just made them. It can make the um, it can make them really quite a bit darker, and can change the colour. It can bring out colour tones that you didn't potentially necessarily want. Um, so with leaves, I definitely do, but I tend to do one leaf first, then steam it to check that it the finished result is what I want, and um, before I go ahead and then dust the rest of the leaves, if that makes sense. Um, But usually I, with my flowers, I don't know because my colour palette is quite muted. So I never usually, you know, like with some, if you're making really vibrant colour tones, um, you might have to load on quite a bit of colour. I don't tend to do many like that because my um, palette is quite muted, if that makes sense. So I never usually... I'm not adding an absolute ton of dust colour onto mine. It's more subtle. Um, so yeah, you, you can give them a light steam, but I just perhaps do one first and then um, steam it and check that it's it hasn't ended up being something different to what you wanted it to be. Has anyone else found that with steaming, that it can change, it can change the finished result of your flower? But again, if you're doing it for competitions, you might want to, to do that because they might, you know, they might mark you down if they can still see like some dust particles on your flowers potentially. So yeah, I always say that. If you're doing this for competitions, do it the right way. Rich? Rich? Is the internet okay? Okay, Rich says it's fine. I could hear him outside. So I just wanted to check that we weren't having a disaster. Okay, so I've got two here that we've made up. I'm just going to pop a little bit on the back of these. And then we're going to take them into a branch. And then we will go ahead and do the double method with the five petal, the double headed one with the five petal cutter, which we'll do in pink. Okay, so I have five of my lovely petals in the white with the yellowy green. Move this out the way now. And we want the brown tape. And I'm also going to grab, I've got a 20 gauge wire here. So at this point, when we're making them onto a bigger stem, we want a thicker wire, but we want it still to be bendable. So here, can you see how I've bent it into a shape? So grab a long length of tape and I'm going to just make this thicker at the top. Let me just say Jan, Jan's going away. Sometimes steaming flowers, yes I've heard sometimes steaming flowers uh, fake, yeah. Some of you have experienced the same. I haven't made any flowers at all yet, I'm just going to have a baker, I'm not keen on the glaze look on flowers, it doesn't look natural to me. Yeah, and I think it depends on what look you want and, you know, um, with the leaves, leaves 
have different I think it's different when it comes to leaves because leaves are often waxier. They some of them are really quite have a really quite high sheen to them. So I will steam and add edible glaze to those, um, but to varying degrees depending upon the actual leaf. Um, so just kind of wrap this around a few times or add in a little bit of bulk to this. And you could actually um, incorporate some little buds here if you wanted some unopened. Um, bits at the end of your stem you can make some little buds that haven't opened yet and incorporate those towards the end of your your stem as well um, ruby rose look lovely steam yeah they do have that velvety look don't they Caroline but I would still just check like on a couple of spare petals just dust on a spare petal first and steam it rather than dust your whole rose which you've taken ages to make and dust and then stick it over the steamer because I remember doing that when I first started making flowers and they were unusable um, and as well just making sure you like you know how much steam to give it because that can make a huge difference okay so I'm just adding quite a bit of layer onto this just because I'm wanting it to be more like a thick branch so just keep adding some bulk on and then decide where you want your first blossom to be attached and just take your tape off and we're going to again wrap Some of the brown tape up and you could use green for this if you want more of a green look to it that's absolutely fine and then find where you want the first one to go and just like that and we don't need to snip this off because we don't mind this this wire looking thicker because we want it to look like a bit more of a branch so it doesn't have to be all exactly the same um, thickness all the way down. It can be a bit knobbly and, and you can add leaves into this. You can add buds into it, totally up to you. But already it looks really effective. And what I would always do is just add a little bit of dust onto this just to make it look not so perfect um, and uniform. Finish off this set of tape, secure it on, the taping bit and seeing them all come together is one of the most satisfying bits when you've got all your component parts ready and you tape them all together, it's fab. And because these are all individually wired, you can totally manipulate not only where you know the angle of each individual blossom but the individual petals as well which I really love for when it comes to arranging he's still on I'm like really paranoid now about going off I don't know what I think do you know what maybe it's that the schools came home and all the kids came home and immediately went on the internet that's what I'm going to blame it on. Do you use a kettle steam? Is it worth buying a steamer for a hobby baker? I used to use a kettle, Kim, up until quite recently, in fact, in my old kitchen studio. Um, but then when I we moved house and I had this workspace studio up on the top floor, I didn't have a kettle, so I bought the little, is it PME? The little plug-in tabletop steamer. I think it was about 30 quid. And it runs out quite quickly. But um, yeah, it's, it's worth it. So if you've got a huge batch to do, just have a, have a jug <laughs> ready to refill it um, because it will run out quite quickly. Um, or you can just have a pan of water on the hob um, simmering away if you wanted. Um, and then you've got like more space to do two at the same time or, you know, do it that way. But yeah, definitely do a test one. That would be my advice. That's a top tip right there. So spacing-wise of these is totally up to you um, and again um, depends on you know the project you're working on and what you're going to use them for but if you're not sure of spacing try not to be too exacting with it. So with these some of them are more, if you look at the pictures, some of them are more close together in clumps, some of them are more spread out and you might have some leaves and branches in there. So um, 
yeah, if you're wanting something that's a bit more like just the branch, then obviously you can crack on with this kind of um, style. But if you're wanting something that's um, got the foliage in and, you know, you can go ahead and make some leaves and, brand and buds as well. I really do like the buds, but um, there's just not enough time. We're already an hour in, so yeah. Okay, so we just keep adding these on. And you could, you know, you could make these quite big um, as a as a branch in its whole, but just keep sort of moving those branches about to sort of get some movement in there and shape, which is why I would stick with the 20 gauge wire, because if you go down to an 18, it's really quite stiff and it's gonna be di more difficult to manipulate your centre wire, especially once all your other wires are, are taped into it. Last one on this set. There we go. Flip it. And check you guys are still on. I also enjoy the taping moment. It gives you the it gives me the claw though, because I'm always like holding everything so tightly to, in place. But um yeah, it's really satisfying. I always end up with um so like thumb joint afterwards. I don't know if anyone else. Um, oh, thank you, Karen. I don't know if anyone else experiences that with taping. It's like repetitive strain, definitely. Okay, and there we go. So that will be ready to put on a cake now. So we've got now three beautiful branches. All made up. and would be good to go on a cake. Let me know what you think about those guys. I'm just going to grab the stuff we need for the pink ones. If you guys have still got time, I'm happy to carry on and do the pink. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, thank you, Heather. Caroline, yeah. Love the taping bit, so much fun. So I've used the brown tape for that, but you could use, if you wanted an all white look, a more white look, um, my flowers are always quite true to color, um, but if you wanted that more sort of all white look, you could use a white tape. Um, if you wanted, I know some people do that with foliage, they prefer the foliage to be quite pale and wedding-y. Um, or you could use like a nice, the, I think this is the Nile green, which is like a, not, there's a dark green and then there's a Nile green, whereas the, you would use the Nile green for this one. Um, so the other thing to just mention is that I would just get actually a little bit of perhaps something like the Squire's leaf green um, and just pop a little bit, I'll show you where I would do that, onto slightly darker than the one we were using before and you can mix them together if you want quite often mix colors together and you can just extend that green that we put on the back of the petals slightly onto the branch to just blend the join i don't know if you can see that because i'm doing it really close to me which is annoying for you guys so just blur those edges between where the tape ends and the back of the petal begins. So if you're worried about those backs showing at all, depending on how you're arranging them on your cake, then you can do that. Just those, that little extra attention to detail on the backs there. But like I said, you could put calyxes on the back, but just, unless you're doing it for a competition or something. Or you're just doing it for fun and you're not charging for it, then absolutely go ahead and put the little calyx on the back. And I would just use something like, I don't know where I got this from, it's a little, just, it's in my random cutters, um, but just a little five petal calyx, or four if you've got a four petal flower, and it just kind of blends 
blends the backs in. Okay, so there is our sort of standard white spring blossom. Let me get rid of this for a second. And there we go. Always getting dust everywhere. Okay, so we don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. We do need this. So the next thing that I want to show you is doing the double headed blossoms. So I made a couple yesterday and that is using this or this cutter from, so this is the FMN one and this is the smaller one from this set. And Blossom Sugar Art, whichever one you want to use. I prefer metal cutters personally, but um, they're literally identical those two. Um, so these are a slightly double, so they're two sets of these added together, put onto a wire with the stamen center. I'll show you how to do that. It's a slightly different way and we're going to use this. So if you've not used one of these before, it's for the Mexican hat technique, um, which hopefully will become obvious why it's called that, because it makes like, the shape of a Mexican hat. Um, so we're using the same paste again, but I'm, I've coloured it with a little bit of the colour mill blush. It's actually really quite pale, so I'm going to add a bit more into that. I use, I'll do it from the white one so you can see. still see. I made six bouquets and 12 buttonholes for my daughter's wedding must have taken home the flowers. Hands are in agony. It does hurt, doesn't it, Sharon? It's glad to know it's not just me. I like the brown branch really. I like the brown branch, Rachel, and it's really nice with the pink as well. I think pink and, pale pink and brown do go quite nicely together. And we're just so, you know, we do see a lot of blossom trees um, in this country coming up to this time of year, so... Just adding some colour mill in and I'm going to just make sure I've got a bit of Trex on my fingertips so it doesn't stick. So this method here is what we did on the hydrangea tutorial. So let me know if any of you remember that or have watched it back since um, from last year. This is how I made my hydrangeas again with the hydrangea version of this from Blos Blossom Sugar Art. Um, A nice stretch to that paste and these also come in blue show you. so this is the blue one here so you can use whichever I might actually switch to the blue because you might be able to see it better there we go and this is the one I use the most <laughs> can you tell okay so we're definitely going to need our corn flour pouch a little bit more in there. So you can use any pink that I've just wanted to use this one because I've never used it before and I bought them a little while ago and I've never used them. But use whatever pink you want. But you're wanting it to, to be quite pale at this stage. And we can bring in any vibrancy with petal dust, like hints of petal dust afterwards. Okay. So that's nicely mixed. So again, keeping our bag close so that we can put any excess in there. So we've got our centres ready. So you don't need to do anything else with them at this stage. We're just using them like that. So we've painted them. We've done them exactly the same as we've done the others. So you can go ahead and make those ahead of time and just use them for whichever, whichever style you want the first one or this double headed one. Okay, so we're gonna pop a little bit of cornflour on there. I'm gonna press this down. You're likely gonna need some cornflour on the top to just stop your fingers pulling it back out again. Okay, so push that down. And we'll want it basically so that paste goes down into this hole. We're just gonna roll it thin. Now, because this is spongy, you can't roll it as thin as you would do on a hard surface. So we're going to roll it thin to begin with. I've just realised I've forgotten to 
do something ahead of time, but it's okay, we'll catch up on it. And then what you might want to do is, if I can find it, is also just check that it's not still really thick. That's nice and thin, that's how I need it. And then take it out, and then that's why it's like a Mexican hat method. I know it's quite a crude example, I didn't name it, it is what it is. I wish they'd come up with a different name for it because it's really quite confusing and a bit bizarre. Um, but we're gonna turn that over onto our mat and we're going to cut out with the, the little stem that's was formed in the hole. We're gonna make that central and we're gonna cut it out pop it out and then we're going to pop it back upside down in the next one up. If we try and put that back in there, it's, it's really going to squish, squash all that. So I'm going to pop it in the next one up. I'm also going to cut another one without the stem out of this paste. So what I would do beforehand is cut out, just roll out some paste on the board, cut out three or four of these, depending on how many you're making at a time, pop them in the Stay Fresh mat. So I had four or five of those and then every time I make one of these I take one of these out to go with it. So for each set you want one without a stem and one with a stem and that's going to make you one flower. Does that make sense? Okay. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to pop that in the Stay Fresh mat while we work on this one. So this is the one with the stem so I've popped it into the next size hole just to keep it safe, keep it secure. And what we're going to do is just, just like we did with the with these ones, where we increase the size, we're going to do the same with this. So we're increasing a little bit each of the five petals. So we're keeping the, the bulk around the middle. We're not trying to thin that out. We're wanting that to have some thickness because that's going to, that's going to cling on to this. But the actual five petals, we want to just spread out a bit, thin the edges, And make nice and delicate. Now you can vein this if you wanted, I tend not to, um, just for speed, but you can, you know, if you've got a, one of the veining tools, the veining sticks, you can go ahead and vein those if you want, just roll a veiner over just to get those striations in, but you absolutely don't need to. Um, comments. I like the brown, not too rosa. Um, I've got one of those blue mats that I never knew what the holes were for. I know they quite often come in a two pack with the white and for years I only ever used the white and the blue just stayed in the room. But I make my hydrangeas this way as well, Heather. So if you go back into the group, um, obviously not now while you're watching, but if you go back into the group um, and look for the hydrangea tutorial in the guides, you'll see I use this to make my hydrangeas and it's a really quite quick and easy way of making them. So with the second, with the one that we cut out without the stem, we're doing the same. Okay. And then we're gonna grab a little bit of glue, or you could use water, but you do not need a lot, so use it sparingly. We don't want things slipping and sliding everywhere. Just pop a little bit of glue. So this is the one with the stem. And I'm popping a little bit of glue just in the centre. And then I'm moving this one on top and I'm offsetting the petals, okay? So I'm not putting the petals directly on top of each other. They're offset from each other. So the top layer has filled in the gaps from the bottom layer. Okay, and then carefully take that out. So now this is what we've got. This is the, we've now got a free Mexican hat. And what we're going to do is thread this down through it. Okay. So I wanted to make sure that goes right through the middle of that stem. And we're going to pull it all the way down and start then. Oops. Stem on this one, my fingers are sticking to it. Start wrapping that round, and we're going to dry these upside down overnight. Okay, so you can just kind of edge those down and pop it into your foam overnight, upside down. Um, 
Now you don't need to leave it upside down for the whole night, you can leave it upside down for an hour or however long it takes for your paste, your particular paste to sort of firm up a little bit. Um, and then you can turn it the right way up again. You don't have to leave it like that, but I tend to because then I can just leave them and crack on. So I'm just going to cut one out here first. Without the stem. I'll make another one of these and I'll just, I've got two that are set already from last night. I'll just add some colour to for the pink double headed blossom version. And again with these, once you're popping them onto a stem, you can add the little buds and leaves as well if you wanted. just going to because these stamen are a little bit um what's the word flimsy when they get to the micro stamen the actual wires that they're attached to are really quite flimsy so I'm just going to add a little bit of tape onto there to give them a bit more strength on that wire just like we did with the other set, but you don't need to go up, up quite as far. Okay, so pop your spare paste in your bag, pop this one in the next size one up, and then we can ball tool it. So again, if your ball tool's sticking, you can just pop a little bit of cornflour on the top there. I'm gonna show you just a different type different trick to shape as well. We didn't really do much shaping on that last one, we just thinned it, formed it, stuck them together and layered it to, layered it onto the wire. With this one I'm going to show you just a little bit of shaping using your Dresden tool. It's a bit sticky. But it's got a nice stretch this pace so with some paste, like if you just use the pure squires on its own, it's a bit tricky to stretch. It doesn't, like it's, you've really got to ball tool it. You've got to put quite a lot of um, effort into ball tooling it, which if you're doing a lot can be quite a lot of like, like digging in and time taken to sort of stretch petals and thin them. Um, so yeah, that's just why I always mix it. So I'm just using my Dresden tool here. So this is a Dresden tool, this, this is the one by PME. You've seen earlier this one as well that I have, which um, you can see it's much pointier and sharper. I use them for different things. This one's by Gem, I think. Um, but for this one, I don't want it to be super pointy. I'm using the flat end and I'm just going to curl it in. So dragging, starting off the petal on that top set, I'm just going to drag in a little bit and it just helps cut those petals. You can also do something like with your ball tool where you can do like that and just create some cupping if you wanted to, just some shaping. So if you're wanting to sort of create more movement and shape in your petals, then you can use like the ball tool to pull in or your dressing tool, the flat end of your dressing tool. So a little bit of glue. This one off second side, and then I'm going to pick that up. Thread it through, and immediately, once you feel it getting up to that top part, you're going to want to start squeezing that stem onto the wire and if your fingers are pulling it away just get a little bit of cornflour on them. It's 
squeeze it round till you've got it nice and secure. And there's your blossom. So if you want to then manipulate that shape and curl this inside one in a little bit, you can absolutely do that. Um, letting it dry for a little bit, you can dry it on its side if you wanted, again stuck into your dummy. So you can sort of dry it like this if you wanted. So one side looks like it's flopping in. This one's going to be more closed, like you can see by the shape that that's forming already. So dry them in a couple of different ways, so some more flopping open, some more closed, some more sort of where the weight of it is on its side and the top layer of the flower is sort of falling in on the bottom. Because that's kind of, you know, a bit of rain and that's what happens to blossoms. So just randomly dry them in a few different ways so that, again, they're not all uniform and you get some variation in your stems. So these four here were all dried exactly the same, upside down, and they all look fairly uniform. Um, I'm just gonna, these have been dusted and these haven't, so we're just gonna quickly dust these. How long have we been on? I think we've been on an hour and a half, so I'm gonna quickly dust these. Whiz through any questions, so make sure you get your questions in now, guys, um, if you have any, um, because I will be answering them shortly. You will be able to watch this back, I'll pop it in the guides if you've jumped on during. Just check. Okay. So, dust colours. I'm going to use um, Dark Peony from Diamond Colours and Rose from Sugar Flare and a little bit of white. Again, always with the white, I've always got it to hand. So with my dusting, what I usually do is layer it. So I will create a pale colour to start with and add a touch of that. And then I will go back in with accents in a deeper colour or a more dramatic colour, just again, just to create a few little accents. So not covering the whole flower and um, just picking out some bits. Okay, and again, don't worry at this stage because when you've seen when we tape them, that we sort of will tape up to the back of this. So you might then want to create your greeny brown on this stem bit here to blend in your tape, just like we did on the others. Okay, so just starting to add, if I bring in this blue and you might be able to see a little bit better. I don't know. Try not to create too much mess, but it's folly. <laughs> I was trying to see if I had any of the stamen that come as cream to show you the difference that painting them, even if they come cream, um, makes to them. Okay, so this dark peony one, I'm just going to add, I mean, it's called dark peony, but it's it to me it's fuchsia pink. So <laughs> make of that what you have. Just literally go in and add a few little bits. You can go as bold or as subtle as you like on these. Okay. So what I would do is not what I've just done. So literally, um, go and do your pale layer first and then go back over, go back in with your deeper colour and add any accents otherwise your brush is going to be getting progressively unless you're using two different brushes which I very rarely do your brush is going get, to be getting progressively darker on the pale layer even so do all your pale bits first then go back in Once you've completed all your blossoms with the pale bits, go back in and then start over again with the deeper bits. But whatever colourway looks good to you, we've all got sort of different preferences, which is great. So yeah, if you do give this a go, let me, I'd love to see some pictures because it's quite a quick and easy one. You don't really need much equipment, especially with this one, you need basically one of these or the metal one. You don't need a veiner, you just need the stamen and a couple
cutter and some paste. And you're good. So these are the pink ones. So I will, while I'm answering any questions, quickly take them together. Might do it with the green actually. See what the green tape is like. But get your questions in or anything like that at the moment. Um, mm -mm -mm. These are much easier and time saving than the wired ones before. I know Rosa, they are quicker, um, which is why I wanted to show both because these ones, some of, if you do have to make a specific type, you know, I get some shoots where they're using a very specific flower because there's a reason for it. And um, they look, they, you know, they can, they do look quite different. So um, yeah, if, if that bothers you, then it's good to know good to know both methods really um but if not then hey just go for the quicker one so even though i'm using green tape on this one um i will absolutely go and dust it i think add a bit of dust to the end tape because it is quite vibrant um later can you put up a picture of a cake that you have used blossom on now there's a question. Um, actually, I'll grab a magazine in a second because I did a tutorial for one of the cake decorating magazines, which had, which I've just taken these blossoms off. Um, the cake is looking a bit worse for wear, but I'll show you the magazine with the pictures in it, and you can see it in there. Um, I'll grab it in a sec. So I've got another twenty gauge wire here. Questions. Uh, I'm done. I think for why then I'm definitely having a go. Oh, amazing, Karen. Thank you for the amazing show. So friendly. Oh, lovely bunch of people. Yes, we are a lovely bunch of people in this group. We are. Um, having a mail with internet today. Oh, me, me too. <laughs> Glad I can watch this back. Oh, I don't think my internet has been particularly good either, Julie. So apologies. Um, so we're just adding some bulk to the end of this. The pink ones as well, the double headed ones, I often see in like big clusters. So rather than a long branch, I see them in more like clusters, which looks amazing. So again, you might use the double headed like pinky ones slightly differently to what you might want to use the ones we did before. Um, okay, let me get these on here. There is no right or wrong with this. Just, and if you get the spacing wrong, you can just untape it and change them. You don't don't worry about it. When I've been, had students here doing classes, you know, you can overthink these things sometimes, and you know, just make a start and keep keep looking at it and seeing where you think you might want to put the next one. You don't need to overthink it, but also know that if you end up with it and you're like, oh, they're that spacing looks a bit weird to me or um, I want to spread them out or they look too spread out you can just untape it just be really gentle to not um, crack any and you'll be fine you can then retape them I'm glad I made some earlier we would have been it all afternoon <laughs> Guys, let me know if you have any follow up questions at all before I'm going to grab this magazine in a sec. It's just on the top of my cabinet. And let me know if you think you might give this one a go. So, um, Kim, I think it was you that was asking about seeing them on a cake. Um, the lovely thing I like about this is that unlike some of the more traditional flowers that you might learn how to make, um, these cover quite a lot of height and distance. So unlike like a rose, which is kind of like fixed or a peony that's fixed, it is where it is. Um, these can be used to add height and 
um, you know, go up the front of the cake or, you know, travel across the front of the cake or whatever, but they can, they can work really well with um, other flowers that are more fixed in position, if that makes sense. So it's like, sometimes people don't want foliage on their cakes because they don't want things to look too dark. Um, but actually foliage can, in an arrangement, can create quite um, a lot of movement and can cover quite a lot of surface area um, without having to make a ton of extra flowers. So substituting foliage for something like this where it's very pretty and blossomy um, can be a really good option for spring weddings. Okay, so obviously you could carry on adding to those and making that a lovely big branch. But what I would probably do is get a slightly darker green, like a fractal grass green, for example. or even like a bit of brown um, and just, that's actually quite similar to that. Let's go a little bit darker. Let's go the fractal dark green. This might be a new one, I don't know. Just very full. I think I would probably add a little bit of brown into this just to make it a bit more woody but that's just me. You don't have to. But you see how I've just blended the tape up to the up the back of the flower a little bit so that it's not a, a dead stop and actually the flower looks like it's actually coming out. That's how you can kind of avoid having to put the calyx on. And I do that on my hydrangeas as well. So you'll see that on the hydrangea tutorial that's in the group as well. Guys, let me know if any of you, obviously the guys that are watching it now, uh, you're watching it live, but if you are watching this on replay, please let me know in the comments. There we go, there's a lovely pink one. Um, and let me know if you've enjoyed it, and definitely, definitely let me know if you have a go, um, and make any beautiful um, spring blossoms of your own. All the hydrangeas, um, I love seeing seeing you use the tutorials to actually you know make stuff whether you're a hobby cake decorator or you've got a business let me just see if i can grab this magazine and not fall over dragging my chair across. I had to stand on it to get on top of the cupboard. <laughs> oh dear. So not that one. This is spring one. Spring 2018. No. Autumn. No. Spring. No. Autumn. Winter. No. August. September. Winter. Autumn. June. July. Summer. Hmm. Not sure which one it was now. If I can't find it now, I will dig it out and pop some pictures in the group. Uh, let me just try this magazine. I don't think it is. Oh, yes, it is this one. Woo! Okay. So this was a tutorial. Oh, look at that. That I did for um, Cakes and Sugar Craft Magazine 2019. Oh, that's flown by. And... Which two branches? This one and this one were from this cake. There we go, there and there. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that. The light's quite reflective, I realise, maybe. I'm waiting for the um, feed to catch up. But yes, just to, can you see how it's added some height and movement here on this cake? Just two simple sprigs. Um, and it's just enabled me to cut, get extra coverage on the actual cake. Um, whereas all these other flowers are kind of in a fixed position. Look at all those stamen in that tree peony. There's so many stamen in that tree peony. So many, like a whole, maybe even more, more than one pack. But um, 
Yeah, so it enables you to just get that lovely height without having to have full coverage. You can still see the cake behind. Um, but yeah, that's the only one that comes to mind that I've got pictures of, if that helps. Um, let me grab these. So there we go.